Hello, and welcome to this edition of School Notes. I'm Sierra Lewis. Spring has arrived and Hampton City Schools marked Earth Day with a variety of outdoor activities and events. These are just some of the photos from around the district. You can see more by visiting our Facebook and Twitter pages. Burbank Elementary had a very special visitor recently. Virginia First Lady Dorothy McCullough visited students and staff to highlight the success and achievements of military children and the area schools that work diligently to help them adjust to their unique circumstances. This month is April, which is the military child. That's why we're wearing purple today. She talked about how health is important and getting good grades and the military students and families. Mrs. McCullough toured the school, talked to the students and staff members, and read to students. She also presented a resolution recognizing the sacrifices of our military families. I like it because um, people will recognize all the people that are in the military. I'm proud of my dad because he um, goes around the world, um, and when he's gone, I'm, a, I'm sad. Um, I miss him a lot. Even though your parents are away, that you should be brave, and even though they're helping, you're also helping. Hampton City Schools named Danielle Smith from Bryan Elementary School, Kyle Hetrick from Andrews Pre-K through 8 School, and Regina Proctor from Bethel High School as the Teachers of the Year for Elementary, Middle, and High School. The district winner was announced during the May 4th school board meeting. Congratulations to Regina Proctor from Bethel High School, who was named the Teacher of the Year for Hampton City Schools. The Jones Magnet Middle School Environmental and Astronomy Club will hold a show for the public on Wednesday, May 11th. We caught up with students as they prepare to host an open house for the planetarium located inside of the school. Students will run the planetarium show and then take guests outside to look at the stars. The May show we're really excited about. We are fortunate to have at this um, planetarium to have two scientists from NASA that provide their services free. And they come once a month and open up the planetarium to the community. Well, because we started this club, they decide to come on board. They come early, about 4.30, and they work with our students until the planetarium opens. And then from this piece, they go ahead and help to educate the kids on stars and solar systems and all those effects. So with the May meeting, we tied this together. So instead of them doing a show that they normally do, the students are providing that show. So they have a, a welcome area, they're providing music, they're doing the advertisements to draw people to come to it, not only students, but adults. And then they are also gonna give the show during the planetarium time, and then afterwards take them outside and actually look at the stars. So all the students are highly motivated and currently working on that to make it a success. Well, there was a lot of reasons. Um, I think the biggest one was just my love for science and the stars when you look up and it's just like, wow, there's so many of them and you just wanna to get to know everything you can about them. I love coming to the planetarium. Um, we haven't, we've only gone, I think, twice. Um, but coming to the planetarium, just getting to be in the darkness and looking up at the sky as almost like a replica, um, looking up, and it's, it's really cool to be able to see the things that are in the sky. I joined this particular club because my interest for the stars in the sky runs very deep. They provide a variety of opportunities. You can work with the oysters or you can go to the planetarium and view the stars, which is very authentic. Actually, my favorite part is the planetarium. I've always really liked space technology and just kind of technology by itself. And You know, we're looking up like the constellations and stuff. I like it to become more of a public place where pe more or like um, kids can learn or like anyone can learn about pretty much space in general. I mean, there's always these other NASA places, but you know, just the stars in general, constellations, it's a really fascinating subject. Fourth graders from Hampton's elementary schools recently attended a performance of the Virginia Symphony Orchestra at the Ferguson Center. About 1,800 students learned about and listened to music from every continent. <laughs> Fourth 
Fergus-Goodders are coming to listen to the symphony here at the Ferguson Center in Newport News. And this is a wonderful event. The students have gotten information. They've been learning about it in their classrooms, in their music rooms, and now they're coming to culminate with a concert where it will be interactive and the uh, conductors and the different musicians are going to be talking back and forth with the students. Most of these students have never been to a formal concert and they've certainly never been to such a wonderful venue as the Ferguson Center where they can see that when they come that their uh, behavior is expected to be uh, on par with a formal concert and they can actually see it in a formal context. They're playing music, like music from different continents and stuff. When he said that the best instruments make the music louder and better. The piccolo, that's right, there's one more we haven't introduced. It's behind the oboe, what's that? The bassoon, exactly. This gives them an opportunity to see instruments that they've never been able to see before in real life. A lot of times we prepare them by teaching them about the orchestra in our classrooms, but we don't have these materials. We don't have violins and basses and harps to show them. So this is the first time they get to experience this in real life. Children who study music and are exposed to it and actually read it actually do better in other subjects. Their brain processes are uh, more acute than most other students. The research also says that children who are involved in music education all the way through high school in a choir or a band, the dropout rate is zero. I've heard stuff from Australia, um, Europe, Asia, Japan, all sorts of countries. We're very vigilant about keeping this in the lives of children in Hampton City Schools. schools have been recognized as one of the top ranked technology use districts in the nation through the Digital School District Survey by the Center for Digital Education and National School Board Association. ACS was ranked number one among districts with 12,000 students or more. Their survey gathers hundreds of responses from participating school districts and creates a top 10 rankings for districts that met digital educational benchmarks in the three different categories. Hampton earned the top ranking in the large school district category. The Super Bowl High School Honor Roll Committee recently recognized Bethel High School as part of the nationwide kickoff to the Super Bowl celebration. The NFL launched the Super Bowl High School Honor Roll Initiative, recognizing schools and communities that contributed to Super Bowl history and positively impacted the game of football. Sean Gill, a graduate of Bethel and a Super Bowl XX champion with the Chicago Bears, gave the Wilson Golden Football to Bethel principal Ralph Saunders, football players and coaches. Today's special. When we got the announcement from the NFL that there was going to be the 50th anniversary and that it was going to be commemorated by sending a golden football to each individual's high school, we realized it was going to be a, a, a very difficult task for the NFL. One, number two, a lot of players had an opportunity to go back home and be there for the presentation. I didn't think I was going to be able to be here, but it worked out and I'm here. And to see the school uh, walk through these hallways again, uh, see some of, uh, uh, some of the, the memories come back as to when I was here, it, it is special and I'm, I'm glad I was able to be here. Before we go, let's take a look at some of the highlights from our social media outlets. On Twitter, Phoebus High School shared photos of seniors as they picked up their cap and gowns for graduation. Aberdeen Elementary PTA tweeted photos of fifth graders reading to their fellow students. And Cary Elementary students spent some time with SIM student resource officer Johnson as they prepare for middle school next year. On Facebook, students from SIMS participated in Global Youth Service Day. The students volunteered their time to bring awareness to help solve problems like child hunger, bullying, and homeless pets. And finally, Mrs. Herring in the fifth grade honors choir from Kraft Elementary posed together for a picture in their matching shirts. It's easy to stay connected with Hampton City Schools. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to our social media sites. Thank you for joining us for this edition of School Notes. Remember, it's every child, 
every day, whatever it takes. We'll see you next time.